we'll walk through a couple scenarios here and then just kind of demonstrate uh, kind of what we're thinking here. So one workflow would be the, the typical bill of material that comes out with isogen just usually has mark size, description, quantity, part number. Uh, but sometimes your clients may require additional information. And so that's where ISOWorks can easily add these additional columns that aren't always available through your piping platform. So just adding an additional column into the bill of material can go quite easily with this process. Uh, so that's one of the, the more basic workflows with this. Uh, something a little bit more a, like expanded would be just kind of looking at the life cycle of an ISO itself. And typically we start with good specifications, good piping models, and they eventually go into a piping isometric. And from that piping isometric, life is good. We don't have any issues. All the bill of material is accurate. Nobody's changed anything. And then in the, the best, best cases of all worlds, it goes out to the field and nothing happens to it. Uh, but very rarely can that ever actually happen. So oftentimes our specs aren't ready. Uh, maybe the guys in the shop need to modify something. And so that's where we're going to work on that or look at that workflow today to where we take your piping isometrics. And when you process your ISOs through ISO works, you not only get your isometrics, but we're also going to create an Excel spreadsheet for each ISO with the bill material and each ISO with its own weld list. Once you have that data available to you, you're going to be able to send the ISOs and the spreadsheets out to the shop for any modifications that need to happen. And once the shop has these <coughs> ISOs and spreadsheets and any changes that could happen during that process will be updated in the spreadsheet and then sent back into ISOWorks so that we can update the ISO with the final information. So these shop updates could be maybe they didn't have the right uh, material in stock and so they went out and found a, an approved alternative and they need to update some of this information or they need to add additional components or additional welds or anything like that. So any of these shop modifications can happen at any point in time and by being able to track this information and capture it, we're able to pass that information on to the field for better installation or for the clients to have better document track. So let's go ahead and just jump right into CADWORKS plant here and take a look at uh, what we have. So on the, the typical screen here, we've got our ISO batch. So we're going to select the model that we want to run our ISOs through. And we're just doing a small subset here of the project that I have open. And we'll go ahead and select a couple lines to get those starting to process. So in many cases, this typical information or this typical process just goes through and gives you an ISO for each line that you run. Uh, but, but in this case, ISOWorks is actually taking some information from iConfigure and putting that into an external spreadsheet for you to work with. And so with that additional information, we can now track all this data separately on the side. Uh, we do have all of our files here. Um, when we run our ISOs through ISOWorks, we basically rely on Isogen to give us accurate data. In this case, it's telling us four lines failed, so we're, we're seeing this notification down here. Uh, in reality, these lines ran just fine. It's just the current issue with uh, the way CADWorks is looking at these ISOs right now. So we'll go ahead and kind of just skip past that part right now because we know these ISOs are good. None of them say pass on the, the ISO name itself. And we're going to move these all into a work in progress folder. What it's doing now is taking each one of those ISO BOMs and weld lists and isometrics and putting them into, we call it our WIP folder or work in progress. And once inside of here, it gives us the ability to now stage these ISOs so that they can go do what they need to, maybe modifications being made or anything like that, and then be able to come back later on and update that information. So if we look at the work in progress folder, we've got all of our ISOs, as well as individual bill of material and weld sheets for each ISO that was ran. So we're gonna take a look at this first ISO here and update the bill of material information on it and the weld information. So we just need to come through this list and find the matching BOM and the matching weld file 
that go along with this ISO up here. And it looks like we got the, uh, the bill of material on top here, so we'll just start with this guy. <clears throat> uh, if we look at the long description, one of the scenarios could be the, the shop didn't have any Schedule 80 pipe on hand. Uh, this is a, a 600 class line, so they found an alternative, and they're going to go with just some extra, extra strong here. Uh, while we're in here, I notice that there's a couple additional spaces in the bill of material, so we can clean that stuff up as well and then just be able to bring this down all the way through and make everything consistent across the board there. Uh, another work scenario here would be part numbers. If you don't have your part numbers built into your specs, but you need to get them into the ISO and there's a, you know, a quick tool to get this information in here, uh, we could start adding some of these part numbers in here. Or same thing with heat numbers. If you give me MTRs back from the field during this process, uh, we could go ahead and add some of that data in as we're going through here. So just kind of copy some of this down and get that information updated. So any fields or columns that you see in here are fully updatable and will show up in the isometric itself. So we'll go ahead and close and save that. So another scenario here, we're working with the weld list. With our weld list, uh, maybe we need to add an additional weld in here. Uh, so we could just come through here, copy this guy, make sure we change the mark number to the next number in line. Maybe it's not a socket weld, but an actual butt weld. Uh, some of the changes you could make, maybe you don't like BW and SW, you need something a little bit more explanatory, you can update that information. Uh, we also have some additional fields over here. So our columns of welder ID, x-ray ID, and the MPI ID, we have the ability to update these guys as well. So Let's go ahead and just start populating some of this information in here. And we understand that not everything's going to have an x-ray, but just the easeability of getting this thing moving along, we'll fill out everything and go ahead and save and close that. So now that we've saved that information, updated it, the, the shop's done everything that they need to do to the ISOs. They're ready to be finalized and sent into a completed folder. So we're going to go ahead and post-process these guys, and we're going to essentially look at each one of these ISOs that we have ran and compare it to the Excel file and look for any updates or any changes that may have happened. And during that process, we're going to take that information from the Excel spreadsheet and throw it into the isometric itself. And looking through the list, looks like everything was successful. So we'll go ahead and close this out. And to kind of just show you an example of what's going on here, we'll open up the original ISO, and we'll open up the updated ISO. Look at finalize. All right, so back to the original ISO here, uh, we can see our original BOM, we've got that extra space that looks a little odd in there, a little peculiar. Uh, we could clean up any of this stuff. You'll also notice that we've put everything into an AutoCAD table, which makes it a lot easier to fix things like this little line over here that could be stretched out a little bit. Uh, you just grab that, stretch the entire thing over. So I think working with AutoCAD tables is pretty nice, being able to do all that. And again, down here, we've got our fairly empty weld data summary table. But if we look at our new updated version of it, uh, we can see now we have our new material that the shop had to substitute. We have all of our part numbers filled in, all of our heat numbers filled in, all that information that wasn't available to us in the model is quickly and easily added into the bill of material. And same thing with, with our weld data. So now we've got all of our welder IDs and our x-ray IDs and our additional weld mark number down here for 21. Now, we don't have an automatic way to add these additional welds, but it's really not all that difficult to uh, just take one of the original welds that Isogen gives us and be able to copy it, add it in, and update the information. So we now have our weld number 21 added into the line exactly where they marked it up on the sheet for us. So just a quick recap here, um, just having the ability to function with additional columns that you may not have access to in your model or additional information that's not always available to us in the model. 
and being able to quickly add that into your ISO is very helpful, as well as just being able to update material information or weld information. Now, I think we'll all agree that the best approach is to make sure that we can get the model updated and the spec updated so we don't run into these issues in the future. Uh, but the reality is we're typically short on time and we got to just get the job done and make sure our clients have all the information they need in a timely manner.